When I first started working on my game Project Pulse and posting devlogs on it, my main goal was to upload one at least every two weeks. I think I missed a day or two. The staple of most game dev channels is to make devlogs on the game that they are currently making. So I thought that it'd be good to make one, although it's a bit late. Like what am I, a game dev channel? In case you haven't seen my last devlog or forgot a little bit about the game, I'll give a quick refresher. The plan is to be a puzzle game inspired by Portal, which aren't like the majority of 3D puzzle games like that, and the We Were Here games. Whereas in my game, your character has a heart rate, and different scenarios will make a change, such as an intense situation or being able to relax. And the things with the character will change. Your goal is to keep it stable while doing puzzles. I do intend on adding multiple ways for it to have an impact on gameplay, but first, we have to start with the basics. So this is what my game looked like before, and this is it now. See any differences? Well the main one you probably noticed is that I got rid of that stupid torch that had 10 game objects attached to it because I didn't know what being organized was at the time. So now with the torch being gone, I essentially restarted my game for I think the second time. Now this is a bad cycle to get into, but when you've experienced this mess of a project, it's kind of helpful. My main two reasons were one, it's really difficult to manage anything on the old project, I forgot to make systems that would allow it to be built off in the future, and two, I'm just better at game dev now. But keep in mind, better does not equal good. So with a new Unity project open, it was time to get started. When you attempt something again, it's usually a good idea to remember the mistakes that were made and improve upon them. For example, when I was first working on my game, I was building a level as I was making the core parts of the game. That was not a good idea. It's generally a good idea to have a scene where you just make components of the game first, and then later put them all together into levels. The first thing I wanted to do was find a better player controller, since the current one I used was a rigid body controller and I don't have the slightest clue on how to use these things. So I looked on the Unity Asset Store and then eventually I found one that seemed to look cool, so I got it and after playing around with it a little bit and changing up some settings, it was good to go. A key part of most puzzle games is having boxes that you would put onto buttons to hold a door open or really do anything, so my first goal was to make that. I found some prototype assets online to use in the meantime, and I got a box walking. I also finally found out how post-processing works, and I'm genuinely concerned that it took me this long to figure out how. Then, my removal of the rigid body controller came back to bite me. You can't move the boxes around with the player itself due to them having no rigid body with mass, so I had to do the smart thing and add a way to essentially pick up the boxes. In my previous version of the game, I would have a box collider determine the area around the object of where you can pick it up. And now I use a raycast, which just works so much more better. And if you don't know, a raycast is an invisible beam that can detect when it hits something. I used one to see if the player is looking at an object that can be picked up. Three headaches later and I finally made a pickup system that totally took no inspiration from other games whatsoever. The, and there are still a few things that need to be fixed, but overall I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now, a box without a button in a puzzle game is essentially a YouTuber without consistent uploads. So I added a button which was really not too hard to make, and I made a really easy way to connect the button to objects where it can call a function for turning on and off. And as the clip has just shown us, things can happen to a box, somehow getting outside of the map, getting destroyed, or just vanishing from existence, so I made a box spawner, where once the box it spawns gets destroyed, a new one arrives. In order for this to be useful, we need intended ways for the box to get destroyed, so I added the budget version of the thing in Portal that breaks them. I'm most likely going to change how this works later on, but it's just like this for now for testing. 
Finally, I have another button that can be toggled on and off without needing to be held down, but overall it works the same as the pressure button. And a final thing I, I want to mention is about this situation. This is something that is very common with pickup systems like this. The player collision with the box is disabled when you are holding on to it, but it is still possible to do if you repeatedly drop it. I tried it with the build version of the game and it seems a lot more difficult to pull this off. So I'm really conflicted on what I should do because if I was playing the game and saw this, I would have so much fun playing around with it, but at the same time, it would make puzzles easy to skip in some cases. This is why I'm asking, what would you do in this situation? The way I currently see it is that a game should be played in the way that someone will get the most enjoyment out of it. It would also be a huge part of speedrunning if that was ever done with this game because, you know, exploits or glitches are used all the time. And in the end, you are choosing to use this exploit, so it's not like something that happens that would ruin the experience. And something that I like to compare this to is the backwards long jump from Super Mario 64. You can skip almost the entire game with this, but in the end, it's your choice if you want to use it or not. And that about sums it up for this devlog, thank you for- Oh no.